Hi, my name is Danny. Oh my God, I found my fit. Oh, can't do that. Hi, my name's Danny, and I'm here to talk about books, particularly my books that I read in the month of May. So May was a really good month for me. I read a lot of books, listened to a bunch of audiobooks, and I read quite a few graphic novels, which are growing to be some of my favorites right now. The first book that I read was Neon Gods by Katie Robert. This book is extremely popular on TikTok, BookTok, if you will. It is a retelling of Hello? Hello? It is a retelling of Hades and Persephone, and it's definitely not for those under 18, let me tell you. Um, yeah, straight to horny jail. <laughs> but I don't know, I enjoyed it. Hmm, what did I like about it? It's not what I expected. There wasn't as much magic as you would think would be in a Greek, Roman, Greek, Greek <laughs> mythology retelling. It's not what I usually gravitate towards in a novel, but I also don't traditionally read romance novels, but I am getting out of my comfort zone with a lot of books now. So here we are. I gave it four out of five stars just because I enjoyed it and it did things to me. The second book that I read was Alone Out Here by Riley Redgate. I listened to it on an audiobook. I picked it because it was the first sci-fi novel that I could get instantly on my phone on the Libby app. I did not regret it. This blew me out of the water. There's a group of children that ends up launching into outer space. It's basically a sci-fi version of Lord of the Flies. I really liked the whole book, honestly. The ending was great. The climax was like, I was on the edge of my seat. <laughs> like, I, I just, I didn't know what to expect of that, this book. And I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. If you can listen to the audiobook, I highly recommend it because it's read by the author, Riley Redgate. I gave it five out of five stars, honestly, because I really enjoyed every minute of it. Like I was never bored with this audiobook. So if you're into audiobooks, take a listen. The third book I read was Ace of Spades by Farida Abiki Iamidi. I'm definitely butchering that. It's a YA novel and it's like a dark academia which seems to be a very popular theme with books, especially young adult novels. It was okay. I, I liked the ending especially, but a lot of the character development was really slow. I didn't find the female protagonist very likable or relatable, probably because she's kind of like privileged and it is acknowledged in the book and it's part of the plot, so. I get it. I gave it a solid four out of five, I think, for a YA novel. It's not something I would really gravitate towards naturally. It, it, it was just like highly recommended to me. And I'm always trying to read books by people of color, trying to get a variety of things. I think the main reason why I didn't like it as much as for some reason I thought it was gonna be like a fantasy novel but it wasn't. I don't know why I always think dark academia is fantasy. It's not. None of the dark academia I've read is fantasy but I just want it to be. I want it to be dark academia and magic. Are there any books like that? Let me know if there is because <laughs> I want to read that. <laughs> The fourth book I read was These Deadly Games by Diana Urban. This was another audiobook that I listened to. It's a YA thriller and I, I wasn't really expecting much out of it, but I love this book. I don't usually read thrillers necessarily unless they're like a sci-fi thriller. Sci-fi thrillers are probably like my favorite genre of all time. These Deadly Games, wild. 
totally wild. It's very, it's a very new novel, it seems like, because like the characters were Gen Z. It's about a girl that's on an esports team and suddenly someone hacks into her phone. She is told that she needs to like stage all these murders of the people on her team. It's, it's a wild ride, honestly. I was here for every minute of it. Not bored at all. Loved all the characters. Great ending, honestly. I'd give it like a 4.5 out of 5 stars just because yeah, it seemed a little YA for me. Maybe I'm just old, <laughs> but uh, like everything else about it was spectacular, honestly. The fifth book I read, I'm not sure if I should count these <laughs> all as one book, but I read a bunch of Rick and Morty graphic novels. Cringe, I know, very cringe. I read the Rick and Morty graphic novels, volumes one through five, Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons, Rick and Morty Go to Hell, Rick and Morty Lil Poopy Superstar, Rick and Morty Worlds Apart, and Rick and Morty Annihilation Tour. I rated them all four out of five except for Rick and Morty Annihilation Tour just because that was just like a compilation book of different like some of the best scenes in the Rick and Morty comics in general and I'd already read like half of them so I was like what am I reading this for? My favorite by far was Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons. Like you don't even need to be a Rick and Morty fan to read it. Maybe it's because I'm a nerd but I love D&D &D. and that book was like almost more fantasy than it was sci-fi. I personally classify Rick and Morty as science fiction but I don't know. I just loved Rick and Morty vs. Dungeons and Dragons. It was so good. But yeah, Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Okay, I need to stop. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! The sixth book I read was We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. I listened to this on audiobook, and the narrator was okay but it wasn't as good as I expected. Everybody hyped it up as like this like sad book. This is another book talk book, obviously. I do like sad books, but honestly this book, I just didn't like the char the main character. I didn't like the protagonist at all. She was cringe, bro. Very cringe. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's sad, but I just didn't really care. It's just a bunch of rich people on an island. Like, okay. Why do I care? Maybe, maybe I'm just biased. I don't know. It was a good book. It just wasn't my thing. So I gave it a four out of five to be fair, cause it was good. Just not my taste. The seventh book I read was Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Another YA novel, but it's dystopian. I love dystopian novels. A lot of people don't like them cause they're like, aren't we living in a dystopia? But honestly, I think it could get more shitty. That's just me. It was more of a romance, like a dystopian romance. I don't really know how to describe the book because I didn't find it very memorable. This is another book that's been on the book talk books. Maybe I'm just getting too old for YA novels. I gave it four out of five stars because dystopian romance, that's not too spicy. <laughs> The eighth book I read was Gothicana by Runix. I covered this in my book vlog that I posted, Another Dark Academia, but a romance this time. I gave it a three out of five stars just cause I probably wouldn't read it again. I sold it on Pego Books because there's a lot of people that like these types of books and I'd rather someone else enjoy it. I don't have a Kindle yet so I had to buy the paper copy and the paper copy was very good as I mentioned so yeah. Three out of five stars. It was I. The ninth book that I read was The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I listened to this on audiobook. I was like okay it's a vampire book. I will read pretty much any vampire book that's recommended to me so I read it. The first half, character building, good. Uh, main character, eh. I'm not from the South, so I can't relate. But the second half of the book, let me tell you, I was like, what? What the heck is going on, man? It was crazy, honestly. I gave it four out of five stars. I probably would read it again just because I feel like there were some details that I could absorb that weren't necessarily 
in the audiobook so i think i'd like to read it like a physical book instead of listening to it the narrator was great she did great with like the voices of the characters but just the southern the southern accent man i'm not with it i don't know what's wrong with me the 10th book that I read was Acts of Service by Lillian Fishman. Again, I covered this in my last book vlog. Um, it's about a woman in New York who's queer and kind of exploring her sexuality, being with a straight man for the first time, with a, with a couple. And it's a stream of consciousness novel. It has no quotation marks. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I, I was okay with it, honestly. Like, I knew who was talking all the time. I gave it four out of five stars. It, it was pretty good. The reason it's four out of five stars, not five, is because <laughs> I hated the ending. I hated it. I get what it was supposed to mean, but what is the point? Maybe it went over my head. Who knows? Maybe it's not for me. Probably. But yeah, four out of five stars. The 11th book that I read was People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I listened to this on an audiobook and it was perfect. It was probably the best romance book I've ever read. All the characters were so likable, not necessarily relatable even, but you just get so invested in her characters. I don't know what it is, but Emily Henry is a phenomenal storyteller. Definitely five out of five stars. If you're trying to give romance a chance, definitely get the audiobook. Get it on Libby. It's free if you can get it through your library. Do it. Do it! The 12th book that I read was Final Draft by Riley Redgate. Um, Riley Redgate did the other book, audiobook that I listened to earlier, Alone Out Here. However, this book wasn't really a sci-fi. It was more like a young adult contemporary fiction. It was about this high schooler that's writing a paper and you know it's like a coming of age story but also she has some like grief and loss that happens i don't think i was the demographic again ya novels <laughs> but it was really good i would recommend it to teenagers and i listened to it on audiobook there's a scene where it was describing her having intimate time with herself <laughs> and i just felt kind of gross listening to it since i'm an adult person. It felt icky, but if you're a teenager, I don't know. It is what it is. It's literature. I gave it, I think, three out of five stars. Narrator was mid. It was all right. Wouldn't listen to it again, but I, I did enjoy it. The 13th book that I read was Woman Eating by Claire Coda. This is a brand new book that just came out. It's a book about vampires. So of course I was like, hell yeah, I'll try it out. The book cover has like almost like a Renaissance type painting on it. So it looks like it's an old book, but it's not. It's about this girl that just graduated from art school and she is interning at a gallery. And it's basically going through her being on her own for the first time because she puts her mom in a, in a home because her mom's kind of cuckoo. She just is like kind of experimenting with like not consuming blood. There's like a lot of things that happen as a result of this and she does a lot of like soul searching for herself. The book only takes place over like I don't know maybe like a week, a few days it feels like. I flew through this book and it's only 200 pages. It's not a sexy book I'll tell you that. There's like people associate vampires with like sexy and maybe it's because of Twilight. I don't know but it's not a sexy book. I love the ending. The ending was so good. It's a 4.5. It, it's it just it is. It's a 4.5 to me. Leave me alone. The 14th book that I read was Saga Compendium One by Brian K. Vaughn. This is another graphic novel, an absolutely massive graphic novel. I borrowed it from the library, and it's it's huge. It's like a thousand pages, I think. This is a sci-fi fantasy space opera. Um, what? Literally, this graphic novel was made for me. It has all the things, all the things that I would love in a novel. The art style is fantastic. It's definitely very sexual in nature, definitely an adult graphic novel. Sexual content is very gratuitous, but as you get further in the story, you realize it's integral to the story. So I'll give it a pass. I gave it five out of five stars because I absolutely adored it. 
I have the second compendium on reserve at the library. I'm waiting for it to be my turn to read it. I want to read all of them. They're so good. Can't wait. I think they're still releasing the comic. Very cool. Absolutely obsessed. The last graphic novel and 15th book that I read this month was Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughn, another Brian K. Vaughn, same as Saga. I just read the first volume. It's not what I expected. It's like Stranger Things vibes because it takes place in the 80s and it's sci-fi. Definitely noticing a pattern with Brian K. Vaughn. I really like it so far. The art style is very different from Saga. It's very colorful and the art style is very unique as well. I'm really excited to read the rest of the volumes that I can get a hold of. I gave it like a 4.5 out of 5 because I, I really like it, but I feel like I need to get more invested in the story before I can give it like a five star rating. So hopefully the rest of the volumes that I read are perfect. Last but not least, my 16th book was Break This House by Candice Elo. This was another audiobook that I listened to. I believe it's a YA novel. Break This House was about a girl who moved to New York away from her hometown and has like started a new life with her father. And it's about how she kind of had to break off from her family but then she gets invited to a family reunion after finding out some news about her family. So then the story is her going back and kind of reliving a lot of her past. I gave it like, I'd give it like a 3.5 out of five. It was all right. I, I did enjoy it, I think. Did I enjoy it? All of these were at least a three star or above, so I'd say it's been a successful month of May. I listen to a lot of audiobooks in May just because I can listen to them at work while I'm doing my, my spreadsheets. I'm also probably gonna be reading a lot more graphic novels, which is gonna make my list longer because they're shorter and they have pictures, so they're easier to get through. I have a really good list for June. I'm very excited. Um, my book of the month comes through soon and I selected a few really neat books from there. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned or if you have any recommendations for me to read in the next month. Even like a good summer read. I've been looking for a really good summer read. I'm thinking about reading Beach Read by Emily Henry since I read People We Meet on Vacation. I'm debating whether I should buy it or not. I've already bought so many books. <laughs> I literally don't have room for any more books. My bookshelves are like tapped out. So maybe I should just buy a new bookcase. I don't know. I don't know. Those were my books that I read in the month of May. If you liked it, please leave a like or subscribe. Do what you want. I can't tell you what to do with your life, but I appreciate you watching. Thank you.